Soldier for soldier, sailor for sailor, airman for airman, the Canadian Armed Forces are the best in the world. That's Prime Minister Stephen Harper paying tribute to the Canadian military's role in the NATO Libyan mission on Parliament Hill this morning. Now, the ceremony included a fly pass by various military aircraft, also a 21 gun salute. Lieutenant General Charles Bouchard, the Canadian in charge of the mission and much celebrated for that, was given the Meritorious Service Cross. But a lot of controversy was also raised. Was today's ceremony an appropriate way to honor the Canadian Force's accomplishment in Libya, or was it a politically driven public display? Let's find out. Joining me now, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Defence Minister, Chris Alexander, is here. The NDP Associate Foreign Affairs Critic, Ginny Sims, is here. And the Liberal Defence Critic, John McKay. Good to have all, right. all of you here. Chris Alexander, let me start with you. Nobody, I think, disputes uh, the celebration of, of what uh, Lieutenant General Bouchard did and the Canadian Forces did. Uh, but this is an unprecedented way to celebrate a mission like this. Um, was it politically motivated to have such a big celebration of a NATO mission? I don't think it's unprecedented, Evan. Uh, look at the kind of celebrations there were when much larger numbers of troops came home from Europe after World Wars. Much larger numbers of troops came home from Korea. They were celebrated in Canada. But not after uh, the Gulf War, for example. Uh, no, but it was a different and a smaller scale contribution on the part of Canada. And on Afghanistan, which we'll probably discuss, uh, the mission continues. So we haven't had this kind of thing. But it's definitely in Canada's traditions. It's in our tradition to have not huge, small, but effective armed forces that do important things in the world, uh, that show leadership, as Charlie Bouchard did, uh, when we are called upon to play a leadership role. And, and it's also in, in our traditions, I think Canadians want to see their government and their whole society thanking the armed forces when they have success uh, and when they do, but even good if things. even if so, that kind of even if Libya is still in flux. I mean, there's so much fluidity. There's still uh, uh, strife among the tribes. I mean, is it too early to slap on a mission accomplished on Libya? Well, we, we haven't been using that term. What what we all agree is that there was a mission, a difficult one that uh, had an uncertain outcome, even up to a couple of months ago. Uh, it was under NATO auspices. A Canadian was leading it, which we have never seen in the annals of, uh, of, of, of NATO. American forces, European forces, Canadian forces under a Canadian from the beginning to the end of the mission. Uh, and that mission is accomplished. Uh, yes, it's, it's an open question how and when Libyans will hold elections, how they will reconstruct the country, how reconciliation will happen. But that's up to the Libyans. And they have the opportunity to uh, consolidate peace and build new institutions because the Gaddafi regime is gone and, and the threats to their civilian population have been dealt with. That success, it deserves to be recognized. Uh, Ginny Sims, by NATO's own criteria, this was a success. They call it a success. What do you make of the government's case? This is worthy of celebration. Uh, they did what they were supposed to do. They came home. Time to celebrate. We absolutely... Uh want to honor the soldiers, men and women who go out and fight on behalf of all of us and for democracy. But when I look at Libya, there is a lot still to be done. Libya does not have that kind of peace that everybody had thought would occur just because Gaddafi had left. I would say there are civilians in Libya now who don't feel safe either. I think we still have a responsibility in Libya, and that responsibility is to help them to reconstruct and to build democracy. But, but is it okay to celebrate the, the first part of the mission, which was the NATO mission? Well, we joined in with the celebrations. Our leader was there. The Foreign Affairs Committee was there. And uh, we don't want to take away from the celebration for the contributions these men and women made on our behalf. And I don't want to go there. But I think what we've got to look at is how do we celebrate? How do we, do we apply that same criteria then to other missions? And are some missions less worthy of uh, so, well, well, celebrating? Well, 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 what's your view? Well, my you? take on this um, is that Minister McKay spoke to me a couple weeks ago about um, recognizing um, Lieutenant General Bouchard. And absolutely appropriate recognition, by the way. Absolutely appropriate. He's a, an amazing, uh, amazing general, and I think uh, we are all rightly proud of him. Um, and, and I thought, well, I, th I thought, yeah, that's a really good idea. 
I must admit, I was a little non-pulsed when uh, we had the flyover, the 21-gun salute, the red carpet, and the, the panoply, the pomp and sec circumstance. Why, well, um, you know, you, you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, well, if that's uh, appropriate, a level of appropriateness for a mission that was seven months, a uh, mission that you know, is certainly less than a billion dollars and certainly maybe even less than a hundred million dollars, uh, where it involves 2,000 people, what will be the appropriate uh, recognition uh, for the return of the troops from Afghanistan in 2014? So I thought, I, you know, I, I thought so the thought scale... Was, are you saying the scale was over the, the top? The scale was, well, it caught me by surprise, and, and I, I, you know, I, I just sort of wonder at this point, well, what's going to be the appropriate scale for any, any future recognitions? The second thing that kind of bothered me was, in effect, the politicization of the remarks by both the minister and the prime minister about, in effect, asking for equipment uh, for the, uh, for the uh, troops. Uh, I don't have any problems uh, for them standing up in the House of Commons and, and making the argument for the appropriateness of the equipment. I do have uh, a problem with uh, the prime minister using an occasion of a, of a recognition of our uh, general uh, as, a, in effect, a, a political ask. The is there, is in a time of austerity, I mean, look, the DND is going to get big cuts. You got to spend, I don't know how much that flyover costs, and if you know, let me know. I mean, we've had some. But is it time to have these kind of displays uh, when there's going to be cuts? We've still got men and women in, in, in dangerous situations in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. It's an incomplete mission. Libya is still in flux. I guess, uh, you know, it's one thing to celebrate, but is it another to kind of put on the kind of display that we've seen here? I mean, I know that you said, you know, after World War II there were celebrations, but think about someone like General World Lewis McCarthy. World War II is a five-year five engagement. Well, but think about um, Lewis McKenzie, for example, who led the UN mission in Sarajevo. I mean, that was a place you know well. Nothing for the Canadians who also risked their lives there. So was this appropriate to do, and does it set a precedent now for other missions? We've had commemorations of peacekeeping and peace support missions. That was not a combat mission in Bosnia. There was combat. Uh, we all know about the Medak pocket in Croatia and the combat the Canadians faced in Bosnia because the mission wasn't perfectly uh, defined and there were unexpected circumstances. Uh, this is a different mission. Uh, and but to it, be fair, it, if, if the line is combat, then technically by that definition, Afghanistan would be over. So it's clearly not just about combat, it's mm -hmm. about being in harm's way, according to the yeah, government's definition. Yeah, but I mean, we're part of an alliance. NATO is still in combat. You know, Canada is out of Kandahar, but we are training Afghan soldiers who go into combat. The United States is still in combat. It's not in NATO's traditions for one uh, country to celebrate the end of a mission when all the others are still facing it. Now, there was reference to procurement. Uh, I really disagree that that was a political reference. You cannot do missions like Libya without the appropriate equipment, without fighter well, jets, fine, and, fine. and without planes. Let, let, me just, let me just finish. Yeah. Uh, th these are things that Canadians understand. Their men and women in uniform need to do the job. But, and, it, but, and it's, but to be fair, the opposition, procurement has become a deeply political it, issue. It has, you know. it has but, but actually, Evan, the whole idea of procurement, something a government needs to do, is not controversial. What we may procure, how much we spend on different things, that was not discussed today. It's the today. occasion, I think, using so, the occasion to, to and, uh, put forward a political and, message. And, and, and final point. And the political if, if message John, was... John, let's me finish okay. my well, thought. Well, I, 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 I got one there. Okay, yeah. you, John, and well, then Chris well, Alexander, you know, I'll, the, I'll give you the last word there. There, there, there. was a, there's a two issue. The, the, the use of the occasion to put forward a political message on procurement, and the second of uh, which is to, in effect, uh, speak to the overall theme of the Conservative Party, which is uh, the uh, enhancement of the military presence in, in our country. And th those two were on display, and they were on display big time, and they were using what is legitimately a recognition of a fine, fine job that uh, Lieutenant G uh, General Bouchard did for those political Okay, purposes. I want to give Chris Alexander a chance, but Ginny, you get your last word so we can get Chris Alexander to respond to those. Go ahead. Well, when you look at it, you know, absolutely, I do agree with my friend over here that uh, the celebration <laughs> is absolutely, um, we have no okay. question with so that. So what is the issue then? But once again, it's the kind of the grandeur of the um, celebration. I was sitting inside, I was taken by surprise.
But I mean, is that yeah. just for the, is this nitpicking? It was too grand or not? I mean, you're there celebrating. The I mean, it's, is, it's, I don't. The Senate I, is a grand. The place. other thing is, when you talk about politicization, if you're going to start talking about procurement of weapons at the same time as you're celebrating the ending of a mission, I would have to agree with you. That's exactly what it is. It's politicizing it because we know the kind of acrimony that exists in the House over the procurement of... Uh, so, so the, Chris Alexander, that if the opposition says this is a time to unify behind the troops, if that's what the purpose of the ceremony is, not try to kind of use it as a Trojan horse to further the debate on what military equipment to buy, which is a very political debate. The troops will be the first to tell you they can't do their job without training and equipment. And if my colleagues think, and if my colleagues think that procurement is a political issue, that it's optional... Uh, for our armed forces to do their job, they're wrong. Uh, Cancelling procurement, reducing it heavily, would take us back to a decade of darkness, and we don't want to go there. But nobody's the, the, talking the, the, about the, reducing. The, 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 the real yeah. point, well, you both seem to be doing no, so. No, what we're uh, saying uh, is and, and, and you are you Chris Alexander. Like Chris Alexander. And, and when you criticize the F-35 and basically propose we not have fighter aircraft, you're saying li missions like Libya will be much harder or maybe impossible to do. The point that's of... Not, no, 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 that's not, not what we're saying. saying. To, criticize, the, to criticize the F-35 is not to say the mission will be harder. It, it's criticizing no, the process. No, no. Evan, everyone it was the process. in these two parties who stands up in the House of Commons is saying it's the wrong aircraft. Well, uh, uh, now, <laughs> now, 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 the, the point of today's celebration is to show to Canadians, as they've seen on TV, but they haven't necessarily seen in their own country, what tools it took to do this job. That's the point of a fly past. Several of those aircraft that flew over are ones that we didn't have a very short time ago, like C-17s, like J-series. Uh, and the troops cannot do their job in far-off parts of the world if Canadians don't understand what it takes to do that. Guys, I, I, I got, we've had, I, I'm fortunate I'm, I'm out of time here for this time. discussion, and I know that you guys, there's lots more to discuss here. Yeah, yeah. What began as a unified yeah, yeah. celebration has, has clearly ended, but this is, a, this is an important debate. Chris Alexander, John McKay, Ginny Sims, I appreciate your time today. Thanks. Thanks, Evan. Thank you.